What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today we got quite a bit of news looking at the big picture aspects of Activision and Call of Duty. And a lot of this news doesn't appear to be looking too great for the Call of Duty franchise. So today I just wanted to touch on this news and share my thoughts and opinions here. And the first big news here is the acquisition of Activision Blizzard King from Microsoft was actually blocked by a regulator in the UK today. And it looks like at the very least, this is going to be a very big setback to this acquisition, if not an indication that this acquisition isn't going to be going through at all. Now, I'm not going to dive too deep into this topic simply because I'm not going to act like I'm an expert on this. I've been keeping up with the news a little bit here or there, but I in no way understand all the complexities that go on with such a large acquisition here. But apparently this was actually blocked not because of the Call of Duty franchise, which is the big reason that a lot of people thought that this may be blocked. People were worried that Microsoft owning such a massive franchise like Call of Duty would really hurt competition. It turns out that's not even the reason for this block. Instead, it appears this was blocked due to the potential of cloud gaming in the future, which is interesting to me because I think we're still a long way out before cloud gaming really takes off. We're gonna need massive improvements to internet infrastructure across the board before cloud gaming becomes really viable on a wide scale. And I don't see that happening anytime in the foreseeable future. And I have noticed a lot of comments on that, so we'll just have to see how the appeal process goes, because of course they are appealing this decision. So at this point, the deal isn't necessarily 100% doomed to fail, but it's just not looking too good for them at this stage. And that's pretty much everything I wanted to mention with this topic. Basically, this is at the very least a big setback to the acquisition, if not a sign that this acquisition is simply not going to go through. For the rest of this video though, I wanted to talk a little bit about something else that we saw today. And this was a bunch of information we got from a press release from Activision Blizzard that gave us updated data on things like monthly active users. And when looking at this, while we don't get a perfect breakdown of information here, it seems like Call of Duty may not be doing as amazing as expected at this point. So diving right in, here is the updated chart with the most interesting data on it. This is the monthly active users in millions. And unfortunately, like always, they break this down with Activision, Blizzard, and King. And obviously our main focus here is just gonna be on Activision because that's where the Call of Duty franchise is. And it's worth noting, we don't get individual breakdowns of how each Call of Duty title is doing. So when we're looking at Activision here, the vast majority of these monthly active users would be within the Call of Duty franchise. However, there's no separation between Call of Duty Mobile, which is incredibly popular and probably accounts for a good chunk of these monthly active users, and the regular mainline Call of Duty games that you see on console and PC. So that is a big disclaimer here. We don't get that perfect breakdown between the individual Call of Duty games. But the big thing that stood out to me here is if we look at March 31st last year compared to March 31st this year, we actually have slightly lower monthly active users this year compared to last year. And that's very surprising to see considering Modern Warfare 2 sold significantly better than last year's Call of Duty Vanguard. With that in mind, you would expect to see higher monthly active users this year compared to last year, and that's just not the case. Now, of course, like I mentioned earlier, this does account for all Activision titles, and COD Mobile would also make up a massive chunk of these monthly active users. So you might be thinking, well, maybe it's just COD Mobile not doing too well. However, there is a website that at least gives us a good estimate of what the COD Mobile player count is. Keep in mind, these are not official numbers by any means, and the website is very clear that you shouldn't be using this as factual data. So this is more so just to perhaps get an indication of the trends. And if anything, when looking at this, it seems like COD Mobile has actually been doing a little bit better over time over the past couple years. It looks like it's been seeing higher and higher player counts. So with that in mind, it appears this drop in monthly active users is not a result of COD Mobile, and instead it's more likely that this is to do with the mainline COD games, including Warzone. And when we look back again at those monthly active users for Activision, the biggest thing I want to point out here is the change from quarter four to quarter one. Because in quarter four, this is when the new Call of Duty game launches. This is when you're going to see the highest monthly active users. And then of course, Call of Duty always follows that cycle where over time that will obviously drop off as interest fades in the game. Then the new game launches the next year, you see a big spike and that roller coaster just continues. So it is normal to see a drop from quarter four to quarter one. However, when Call of Duty Vanguard launched in quarter four of 2021, we saw 107 monthly active users and then that dropped to 100. So that's a drop of roughly six and a half percent. Whereas this time around, going from quarter four 2022, where Modern Warfare 2 launched as well as Warzone 2, to quarter one, which we just got the data on today, this was an almost 12% drop to monthly active users. 
which is almost double the drop that we saw in the previous year with an apparently much weaker Call of Duty game. And this is the exact opposite of what you'd expect to see. With a stronger Call of Duty title, as well as a launch of Warzone 2, you should be seeing these numbers improved over the year. And that simply didn't happen here. And to me, the way I interpret this at least, keeping in mind, of course, they do keep that data fairly vague, so we do have to make some assumptions and guesses here. It seems like Modern Warfare 2 and or Warzone 2 are really not performing as well as they should be. If I had to guess, I'd say Warzone 2 is probably the bigger contributor here. It didn't seem to land very well with large portions of the community. And just out of interest, I wanted to see how Warzone is doing in Google Trends. So here's a graph of the Google Trends of Warzone since it launched initially in March of 2020. And as you can see, there was a steady decline and then obviously a really big spike when Warzone 2 launched, but that spike did not last for long. And almost immediately after that spike, interest in Warzone seemed to drop even below just before Warzone 2 launched. And this is not what you would expect to see if Warzone 2 were successful. If it were successful, sure, you would of course see some drop after that initial spike, but you wouldn't expect it to drop all the way to below the levels that it was at before Warzone 2 launched. So all of this data seems to point to Warzone 2 being a pretty big failure. It seems like Warzone is not doing too well overall. So like I said, I do feel like Warzone probably accounts for most of this drop in monthly active users, but we don't know what kind of role Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer plays in this as well. In either case, this data isn't looking super promising for Call of Duty, but then again, at the end of the day, it's still Call of Duty. I'm not saying like, oh, Call of Duty's dead or anything. Obviously, there's still tons and tons of people playing. It's more so just looking at the trends, and it does appear to be trending downwards, which does have me hopeful that Call of Duty will wake up and start doing better by the players. It seems like in so many ways they've been losing touch with their player base more and more, and I feel like so many people have just gotten completely fed up with this, and they're finally starting to drop off, so we're finally starting to see the results of them not focusing on the player experience. And like I said, my big hope here is seeing this decline, and seeing it decline much more than would typically be expected, I'm hoping this leads to them focusing on doing better and really focusing on improving that player experience. Now, of course, this is just my interpretation of all this data, as well as my opinions on everything that's going on today. And this is where I'd love to hear from you guys in those comments down below. First up, what do you guys think about the fact that the UK is blocking the acquisition of Activision Blizzard King by Microsoft? And second, what are you guys thinking about the monthly active users and the apparently much larger drop than would typically be expected with the launch of Warzone 2 as well as Modern Warfare 2? Do you think this could potentially force them to wake up and turn things around a little bit? Or do you think nothing's really going to change here? Just let me know all of the thoughts down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.